There's a lot of really good reasons to upgrade suspension on a motorcycle. I'd love to do a really detailed video breaking everything down and showing you all kinds of graphs and I'm going to later, but I'm too excited to put this on the on the Beamer. So I'm just going to give you a kind of a quick walkthrough on what I'm getting for all the money I spend on aftermarket suspension. And when you hear about a, a two way, a three way, a four way or a five way adjustable shock, what are you actually getting? <clears throat> so this is uh, Tractive Suspension. Tractive is the same company that makes all the suspension for the TourTech or TourTech Extreme. And it's now available in the States directly from Tractive. So that's what I'm putting on to the BMW. And this is a four-way adjustable front shock and the rear shock is also a four-way adjustable. Now here's what the four-way adjustable means. Number one and the primary adjustment that you're gonna find in any shock or an upgraded shock is gonna be preload. And this has a collar here and this collar I can loosen up. And you can see this is threaded. And as I thread this collar here down, it compresses the spring. That's one way to adjust the spring. If you have a remote adjuster, then that adjustment has a little knob or dial on it. The GS, because it has ESA, has electronic. And what it does is it has a sensor on the bike and it can tell if the bike is squatted too much or if it sits too high and it sends a signal to the shock and has an automatic adjustment. So the rear shock on this one is tied into the bike. The front one is a manual adjustment. So that's one adjuster. The next adjustment you most likely will find on the bike is going to be rebound and rebound is generally at the bottom of the shock. Now a GSA or, a, or one of the BMWs, the big ones, they have a shock on the front and the back. If you have a traditional motorcycle or anything other than the BMW, then you're going to have forks and those adjustments are most likely going to be on the bottom of the fork. If you have a European bike, sometimes you'll have that adjustment on the top of one of them. That, that's going to be your rebound adjustment. Now that rebound adjustment is just controlling how quickly that shock extends after it compresses. So that's a two-way adjustable. I mentioned this one's a four-way. This is my compression adjustment at the top. So you can see I have two of them. One's a high speed, one's a low speed adjustment. And that high speed, low speed, this is something a lot of people get wrong when they look at suspension. They think high speed means when I'm riding high speed. It's actually about the speed of the shock, not the speed of you as a rider. And if you think about it, if you go over a four inch curb, that's a high speed. When you ride over a curb, your suspension is going to move really fast but your bike's probably moving really slow. When you're going down the freeway, you're driving at a high speed, but your suspension is generally moving at low speed. So that's your high speed and low speed compression. Your high speed adjustment is generally done at lower speeds. Your low speed compression is normally done when you ride at higher speeds. So that's my four ways now. So spring adjustment or my sag or spring compression, my rebound, my compression, high speed, and compression, low speed. The fifth way you can adjust a shock is in spring or in total shock length. And if you look at the Tour Tech Extremes or the Tractive for some of the older BMWs or for many of the other models, you'll see one more adjustment down at the bottom where this piece where it mounts at the bottom can extend out or get shorter. And that is for shock length. So that's your five way adjustable shock. This one has an automatic, it's tied into the ESA, so it has automatic adjustment for the rebound and for the preload in the rear with a manual compression adjustment. And on the front, it has a ESA tied into the rebound, but the preload and both compression, uh, high speed and low speed compression are also uh, manual adjusted. That's what we're looking at. Now, uh, the other reason that you can upgrade shocks. This particular bike has been converted from a 19 inch rim to a 21 on the front. That increases the circumference by two inches, which basically gives me one inch extra ride height on the front, which means the bike is no longer riding level. It's now riding with the front just slightly high. That's gonna change the handling of the motorcycle. It makes it just a little less stable when I'm in corners out on the road. And when I'm running higher speeds, it always feels like I have a passenger and that my preload's not correct. On an older GS, if I have a five-way adjustable rear shock, I could adjust the spring or the shock length in the rear of the bike. That would cause the back of the bike to come up. 
that would correct the attitude of the motorcycle. And then the only difference I'm gonna feel is the difference of the wheel and the tire, not the geometry. This Rally 17 Rally doesn't have an option for that, but it does have a taller suspension. It rides basically on GSA suspension. If you're not familiar with BMWs, the GSs come with three different lengths of suspension. They have a low suspension, a standard suspension, and they have a tall suspension for their big GSAs. Those are the adventures, the ones with the big massive tanks on them. And also the Rally model has a GSA type suspension, but it's sprung for a lighter bike because it has that same height, but it's a lighter motorcycle. This particular bike, because it has that tall suspension, I was able to leave that tall suspension in the back but the front, I switched out to a standard height suspension, which is 20 millimeters shorter. That means that bike is kind of back down to the basic attitude, although it wasn't a huge difference. If I'm gonna spend that much money on suspension, I want the bike to be correct. So one of the reasons to buy suspension is not just for more adjustments, but also to help correct attitude of the motorcycle if you have other modifications. A lot of us don't always think about how each thing we do to the motorcycle becomes a or how much it affects everything else. The quality of the suspension also is going to change. In this case, it's a lighter suspension. These are higher quality spring uh, on the metal. I did a video on springs. I end up with a lighter spring, but I have a better quality, more consistent metal on the spring. So it's more expensive. Also, the shock body itself is made out of a milled aluminum, and it's a little more effective for dissipating heat. The valving in this is controlled electronically, but the valving is a little more precise. And also, I have a 30% greater volume of oil inside, which is better for heat dissipation. Turns out what shocks do is they turn energy of movement into heat. We don't create energy and we don't get rid of energy. We convert it from one form to another. Shocks confer, confer, or uh, what they do is they change movement into heat. And that's how they change that and control the, the shock movement. So just better quality components, lighter components, more consistent, obviously a lot more expensive than a factory shock. And that's what we're paying for. Huge investments on these bikes uh, to do this. But if you want the most out of your bike, that's what we end up doing is we spend a lot of money. As I mentioned in a, a recent post I put out on Facebook, motorcycles are a purchase of passion and definitely not a purchase of logic.